the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. The Gospel for today, my beloved, is about the healing of blind Bartimaeus. Of course, the connection is obvious with the tomorrow's Gospel, which will be the healing of the blind man, is the healing of also another blind man. Um, actually, the theme of this whole week is enlightenment, um, and today's theme is about the, like the road to salvation. Uh, and if you find the beginning of this gospel, it begins and says, Now they came to Jericho as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great multitude, uh, blind Bartimaeus son of, sat at the road begging. So it mentions here that they came to Jericho. And Jericho was like a low-lying city, and Jerusalem was on a mountain. So the fathers of the church looked at this and they said, This is just as us as we're going through like the world or going through like the, uh, the hardship and then coming up to Jerusalem, which is uh, the kingdom of heaven, or resembles the kingdom of heaven. So we'll find on this road there are certain steps that we usually have to take to find this healing as the blind Bartimaeus found. The first is we find the faith. This blind man whom we know his name, unlike tomorrow's uh, healing, we don't know the name of the blind man, but today it's, the scripture records it for us. Um, so in order for Bartimaeus to have his healing, the first thing he did, he needed to display his faith. And it's, uh, you'll find that when the Lord is passing by, he heard that he was passing by, and he yelled and started crying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. So the first thing he declares is son of David. And son of David was a messianic term, like for the Messiah. This is why on Hosanna Sunday, this is what the people were saying, Hosanna to the son of David, because he is the one who would be the Messiah, who would be their savior, right? Um, so he displays his faith that the Lord Jesus is the Messiah. He is the son of David. He is uh, the savior. Uh, and not just somebody who's a healer or not some kind of really gifted physician, no, but the son of David. So the first thing is that they display the faith. The same thing that happened with the Canaanite woman, the pagan, who didn't know God at all. Christ put her in an awkward situation, and so she was able to display her, face, her faith when she confessed him and said that uh, even the dogs eat from the crumbs of the master's uh, table. The second one is the need for mercy. This is why he follows and said, Son of David, have mercy on me. Now this blind man, we don't know the history of his blindness, but certainly he couldn't help himself see, nor could the physicians or the people help him see. But only one person could help him, and that was God. He needed some divine intervention. And he felt that the Lord Jesus, being the Messiah, the Savior, is the one to whom we need to ask mercy. So he asks for mercy. And this is the same with us, my beloved. The only way that we are healed from any sin is by acknowledging that we need God's help, we need his mercy. If I'm struggling with any sin and I believe for a minute that I can conquer this sin and eradicate this sin from my life because of my own effort, we will fall into it again and again and again. Only until we completely, you know, make ourselves vulnerable to God and say, I can't help myself, I need you to help me. This doesn't mean we don't do our part. We do our part, but the healing will only come from God. So he asks for uh, his mercy. Then we'll find the healing. The, man, uh, the Lord came to blind Bartimaeus and asked him the question. He says, um... And he said to him, what do you want me to do for you? But again, the same thing as we heard you know, last week with the paralytic man. He asked him a question, what do you want from me? Just in case he doesn't want to be made well. Just in case he might have another request. And his response was for me to regain my sight. He knew exactly what he wanted and he asked the Lord Jesus right away. There are many people in scripture where the Lord asked them, or God asked them, what do you want? And he allowed them to answer, right? Just like Solomon. Solomon, when he became king, he says, what is it that I can do for you? And he thought for a minute and he said, well, give me the wisdom to govern the people that you've entrusted me with. If God were to appear to you and ask you, kid, in a dream, what is it that you want from me? 
one thing that you ask and I will give it to you. What is it going to be? Is it going to be to get the promotion, to get accepted to this college, to get this particular job, to be able to find a house, to be able to get this thing or that thing? Or is it going to be the salvation of my family, the remission of my sin, or wisdom like Solomon asks? What is, what is it that we're going to ask the Lord if he asks me, okay, what do you want? What sickness do you have that you want me to heal? And he said that I might receive my sight. So he received his healing. And then immediately after his healing, it says what? Go your way, your faith has made you well. So he says to him, go your way, you're free to go. But then what does blind Bartimaeus do? He says immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. On the road. On the road where? Hmm? Heaven? Yes, eventually. It's to Jerusalem, all right? He was going, for, he's going to Jerusalem passing through Jericho, all right? Going to the road to heaven or going to the road to Jerusalem. So he accepted. He received healing and he accepted to go. Do you remember the time where the Lord healed ten uh, lepers? Only one of them came back to thank him. The rest left. The rich man, uh, the rich young ruler, he came to him and says, what is, I, what is it that I lack? I want, to, I, want, I want eternal life. And he said, go sell your possessions, take up your cross and follow me. And he turned and he left sorrowful. He was sad because he wasn't willing to go on the road. My beloved, our journey through this world is not simply so we can, you know, not do bad things, do some good things, and that's it. But we're on a journey together. We're on a journey. And as I'm going to this journey to the kingdom, it might have to be, or it will have to be, the way of the cross. The way of the cross. No one goes to heaven without some kind of cross that they bear. Nobody. This is the way. If you want to be my disciples, take up your cross and follow me. There will be a road through Golgotha that goes to the kingdom of heaven. And to some extent it will be different for all of us. But the one thing that is common is there must be some kind of sacrifice on my behalf and something that I bear for the sake of Christ. Whether it's the burden of others, whether that's an illness, whether that's a grief, whether that's a hardship in my life, whether it's poverty, anything. But there must be a cross by which I go through to go through the kingdom of heaven. This man was blind for some time. And then when he was healed, he said, I'm going to follow after the one who healed me. And this is my beloved, what makes the best evangelist. The ones who, when they're healed, they go on this road and they come and say to others, come join me on this road because I have been healed. Exactly what St. Paul did. St. Paul, when he was preaching, he wasn't preaching the theology to the people in the beginning. He was preaching to them, come, let me tell you about the one who appeared to me on the road to, uh, on the road to Damascus and had mercy on me, the one who used to persecute and kill the Christians. Come, let me show you who he is. This is the road to salvation. This is the road through Jerusalem, through the cross. May God grant us all our, our heart's desire of our healing of our souls and bodies and let us, when we're healed, to enter into this road uh, through Jerusalem, through the cross. To him be the glory forever. Amen. Jay.